Hey, I'm Cherie with RVMobileInternet.com and today we're going to be talking about mobile boosters and how to use them in an RV environment. Now a lot of the boosters on the market, this is the Wilson Sleek. Uh, WeBoost also has a similar model out as well. This is the top signal uh, booster that just came out. It's a 4G booster. There's also the mobile 4G and WeBoost has also the 4X Drive. Uh, line as well. These are all mobile boosters that have been certified by the FCC to be used while in motion. Now they were designed specifically to be used in a car and they come with a stubby little rubber ducky antenna. Uh, it's a magnetic mount so it just sticks right to the top of your vehicle's roof. Now a lot of people think that these antennas are magnetic just to stick to the metal. But the truth of the matter is, is these antennas also utilize the metal in the top of the car as part of the antenna strength. So there's signals all around the atmosphere around us. And what this does is the metal here reflects the signal up into the antenna and that's part of the strength of the antenna. Not bad on a car. Most cars have a metal roof, so that's not a problem. When we get to an RV, however, not all RVs have a metal roof. In fact, most of them don't. If you have a bus, like we do, or an Airstream, or an Avion, or any other sort of metal constructed RV, you're good. You're going to be getting the ability to put this antenna on the top of your RV's roof and get that signal amplification from the reflection of what we call the grounding plane. So basically here, the car is the grounding plane. And if you don't have a grounding plane on the RV, you're not going to be getting the full signal strength. And we'll go over how to achieve that well first, but first I want to show you just what the difference this makes. Okay, so first we're just starting with the raw signals coming into this iPhone 6. We're getting a negative 113 right now. I think on the film it said a negative 111 decibels. Now, uh, decibels, they go negative, they go upward. So the higher, the less signal you're actually getting. And we have this set in field test mode, so we're actually seeing the decibels, not the bars, because bars aren't always where it's at. Uh, look for your device when you're doing signal testing to find out how to do this. Now, let's put this... We have our grounding plane up here on the top of the car. We're going through the top signal booster, and this is the interior paddle <laughs> that uh, we're going to boost with. So I'm just going to put this up next to the phone, and we are down to negative 81. So we got a substantial boost out of this booster just by having the grounding plane. Now let's take this off the grounding plane, just out in thin air. And let's see what happens. All right, so with the antenna not on the grounding plane, we are still going through the booster. It's now getting a negative 107. So we're only getting a slight boost. So you can see the difference that you get by having that grounding plane underneath the antenna and reflecting that signal up into it. Pretty cool. Make sure you have a grounding plane. So how, how, do, we, how do we achieve that on the top of an RV that has perhaps a fiberglass roof, which, which is how most RVs are set up? What you'll need to do to install it, is you'll need to get just a piece of metal. You'll need, probably for a booster this size, about five to six inches of metal. And if you put that on top of this piece of metal and then affix the metal to the top of the RV, you can use silicone, you can do some sort of adhesive, even um, Velcro if you want to, you could put up on the top of the roof. Now you have replicated the grounding plane that the automobile provided that this antenna was intended for. It might even be good to flip it upside down so you don't have a puddle on your roof. Oh yeah, we probably want to go that way. <laughs> See, we learn something every day. Um, if you have a metal RV, like I said, you already have the grounding plane built in. If you're aluminum like us, you're not going to get the magneticness of it, so you will still have to use some silicone or some sort of adhesive to actually attach this to your roof. Um, other alternatives to using a, a, metal t a piece of metal, you can use scrap metal, you can use an old saw blade, a cookie sheet, um, anything you have around. It doesn't necessarily have to be magnetic. You can also use a metal tape, a tape that has metal built in to it or even aluminum foil will work as well. Of course it's not going to be as durable as uh, something like a piece of metal but it'll work and get the job done. So there you go. That's the benefits of using a grounding plane and how these little rubber mobile antennas mm -hmm. work.